Hey guys, Cameron with CBM Reviews here, and we're on the road to Infinity War. This episode, we're talking about Captain America, the First Avenger. Captain America, the First Avenger was directed by Joe Johnson. It starred Chris Evans as Steve Rogers. It also starred Hugo Weaving. It starred Haley Atwell and Tommy Lee Jones. What is my take on Captain America? I'll tell you. Whenever I said I was going to go watch it, I'm just an avid comic book fanboy, and I said I'm going to support it. It may not be that great because we've had a bad history of Captain America films. Yes, yes, this is true. And this one was not the same thing. This one actually was a character piece, and it was a war movie and comic book movie combined, and the marriage was good. <laughs> I remember being a little bit worried and I went to go watch it and I said, whoa, this movie is actually good. I don't want to talk too much about this movie. I've got quite a few people who did want to talk about this movie. I'm going to let them tell you what they had to think about it. Take it away, guys. I absolutely love Captain America. What's not to love? Captain America is an everyman's hero. Anybody can be Captain America. You're not an alien, you're not this, you're not that, but anybody could be Captain America. I remember growing up as a scrawny little kid, and hey, you want to give me a super soldier serum, and then I become Captain America, you, you know, the government gives me a shield, and, and then I'm leading Earth's mightiest heroes around? That's so cool. When Chris Evans was selected, I went, okay, well, he's American. I like that. That was actually a really nice touch. And then I went, well, but he was already, you know, the Human Torch, I don't know, Fantastic Four, double casting, because it's both Marvel and everything else. Rights issues aside, this is one of those things where I was pleasantly surprised. I really was, because I was worried that Chris Evans wouldn't be, you know, strong enough. Uh, his role as, as the Human Torch was distinctly different, you know, obviously kind of comedic, versus this is a more serious role. But again, it just shows the acting range of Chris, Chris Evans. We also get to go ahead and see his relationship with Bucky as a friend, because that, there's really no time to develop that later on, so it's really good that Marvel went ahead and did that at the very beginning. Then, as the movie continues, we go ahead and see his relationship with Dr. Erskine, and that is fantastic. The doctor's, hey, you know, you're, you're the real deal, be a good man, and I love, I love the scene when he's getting the medical exam, and the doctor goes ahead and says, so, you want to kill Nazis? No, I, I don't want to kill anybody. I, I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. That's Captain America, right there. The way he delivers that line, he absolutely sells it, that's spoken like a true hero, and that's the guy we see in all these other movies. Every movie since then, he is fighting the bullies. He's fighting the big bads. It doesn't matter whether you're from another planet, from another dimension, you're from anywhere. If you're trying to, to hurt other people that are weaker than you, I'm going to stand up against you because that's my job. That is awesome. And then, so he goes ahead and goes through boot camp. That's kind of fun. We see the vast contrast between him and others. The, the scene where he throws himself on the hand grenade, again, emphasizes his, his sacrifice, his self-sacrifice for others. And then we saw it at the end of the movie as well, when he sacrificed himself. And again, this all goes back to the theme of who is Steve Rogers. You know, one of the things that Dr. Erskine also went ahead and told him the night before the surgery is, hey, don't worry about being a perfect soldier, just be a good man. If you're a good man, everything else will work. And Steve Rogers absolutely is a good man. My favorite scenes in particular, I love, love, as, as far as an action scene goes, when there's the, the saboteur and he's in there and he blows everything up and then, you know, Cap goes ahead and chases the guy down he's jumping over cars and chasing him on foot while the guy's driving off on a car. That was really cool. I love when he gets the car door and he's using that to block bullets. I'm going, man, could you imagine if this guy got a real shield? That was really, really cool. And so when I look at this movie, I look and I see there's so much that's right with it. It's, it's really hard for me to say, oh, I didn't like this or I didn't like that without being just absolutely nitpicky and critical. So by all means, this was fantastic. This was another just home run out of the park as far as I'm concerned. I'm really glad that in the lineup, we got Captain America next coming up to Avengers because he really does help bring everything else together. They took a Boy Scout and made him watchable and enjoyable. I like how they put the spin on his whole punching Hitler and his adventures being theatrical, which would definitely uh, make sense for giving a nod and a wink to fans who've read the old comics where he did all those things. Is this a must-see for uh, anyone trying to catch up? to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. No, if you're wanting, if you don't care about Captain America, 
Yes, if you do. Now, Marvel had their work cut out for them on this one. You're talking about the hardest to adapt of the core characters. I mean, Iron Man, you've got the tech suit. Thor, you've got this, this grand kind of medieval fantasy, Norse mythology. But Cap, you've got the Boy Scout. People say, how do you write an interesting story about Cap? He's bland. He's the good guy who's good because he's good. Well, when you're talking about Thor, when you're talking about Iron Man, You've got two people who turn to heroism as a means of redemption. You know, it's they, they'd already suffered their fall from, from arrogance, from vanity, what have you. Cap? Cap started out the hero. He just didn't have the means to be a hero. You know, he was good-hearted, he was humble, and he was given a chance to, to make good on those. So his heroism is really an extension of himself. I mean, if you look at that uh, that moment, which is probably my favorite moment of the whole movie, where Dr. Erskine is asking him, you know, so, Private Rogers, do you, you want to kill Nazis? And Chris Evans, Cap, just looks at him and goes, I don't want to kill anybody. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. I mean, what a great moment. What a great character moment. Like, that's everything you need to know about the guy right there. Like, it, it's, it's perfect. They had maybe the hardest character to adapt that they could have, have tried to do for their uh, core cast, and they knock it out of the park. Marvel sets out to adapt maybe the hardest one that they could have, and what they give us is the best Superman movie that we've had since 1978. It's really in this one a lot more the writing and the cast than it is the visual effects, because as much as I love this movie, there are some of the visuals that just don't hold up. But you can excuse it. The rest of the movie is so strong, you don't care. Chris Evans is pitch perfect as Cap. He brings all the charm, all the warmth, everything that you would want out of someone named Captain America without just this big cheesy smile and goofy you know, cartoon voice. Like, he really brings a lot of grace to the role and he's kind of become my favorite. Bucky doesn't have a whole lot to do in this movie, but what he does, he does well. This is where the writing and the casting really sells it. The chemistry that he and Evans has is rock solid. Like, you really buy that these two are childhood friends going, you know, all the way back to, to, to Brooklyn, Coney Island, whatever. When he does die, it's not one of the better be death scenes, but what it sets up, it's worth it. It's worth it. Next up, we've got Haley Atwell. Now, she plays Peggy Carter, one of the founding members of S.H.I.E.L.D., right there with uh, Howard Stark, who gets a nice little bit in this film, and it's fun to see him as more the young, adventurous Stark than cranky old Tony's dad, Howard Stark. Haley Atwell plays Peggy, I mean, again, just to a T. She's smart, she's self-possessed, she's assertive, she is nobody's damsel in distress, and she has a genuine affection for Steve that starts out as a friendship. You know, she sees this kid who really doesn't have a chance up against all these other military recruits. I mean, he's, he's 4F, but he sticks with it. Uh, so when there there does start to develop kind of a little bit of a romance between them, you buy it. It's not forced, it's not rushed, and that makes it that much more poignant and that much more powerful when we get to the, the climax of the movie and we see that, you know, Steve's never going to get that dance with her. I mean, that, that just, uh, just... Great moment, great ending, great performances all around. Tommy Lee Jones steals every scene he's in. He's got all these great one-liners you remember. Uh, and he's just Tommy Lee Jones being Tommy Lee Jones. And finally we get to the villains. Now they double dipped in this movie and I am, I'm, I'm glad they did. You've got Red Skull played by Hugo Weaving and Hugo just, man, he does not hold anything back in this role. You've got this wonderfully calculating sinister villain that is a perfect foil to, to Chris Evans' charm. Uh, I mean, Weaving plays him with a lot of nuance. The interplay between him and uh, our second villain, Arnim Zola, played by Toby Jones, is a lot of fun because you can tell that Zola hasn't drunk near as much of the Kool-Aid, but he's in it every bit for the pure science. Like, he's, he sort of uh, uh, represents advancement without a conscience. The final act, with that bomber heading towards uh, New York and Cap doing everything he can to, to stop Red Skull, and having to sacrifice himself in the process, just oh, great movie, top to bottom. Would I recommend it? Absolutely. Would I recommend it above pretty much anything else in phase one? Absolutely. If you haven't seen uh, Captain America the First Avenger, definitely put it at the top of your list. Thank you very much, John, Aaron, Josh, on your thoughts on Captain America the First Avenger. If you guys who are watching this want to be just like those three, send in your videos to comicbookquizbowl at gmail.com. What do you need to send in? 
Well, we're upcoming on Avengers, Iron Man 3, and Thor The Dark World. We're still tallying entries for the Marvel Cinematic Universe Blu-ray giveaway. So if you want to get entries into that, number one, be a subscriber to CBM Reviews. Number two, comment on the videos because you get bonus entries for any comments that you make. And number three, send in a video talking about some of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies and that gets you buku entries into the possibility of winning all of these on Blu-ray. Don't miss out. I want to give this away to somebody. Let's get to 200 subscribers. We can do this, guys. So those are my thoughts, as well as other people's thoughts, on Captain America the First Avenger. What did you guys think? Do you agree with those thoughts? Were you not so keen on it? If so, let me know. Put it down in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And I've already said it before, but if you're new here, subscribe. Share this video with all your friends. As always, this is Cameron with CBM Reviews. We'll see you next time.